Welcome back to Diesel Talk with Tony Salas. How you all doing? Uh, thought I'd talk a little bit about LM2 Duramax. For the last five videos I put out, they've been on after treatment, diesel after treatment on overall on the big three. And in this case, I thought I mentioned uh, LM2. Now the LM2 is pretty much going out the door. Its replacement is the LZ, LZO. And in this case, if I say that wrong, sorry. Uh, but in this case, it's already been replaced by a revised version of this engine. So in this case, I thought I'd mention about the after treatment because we mentioned about the diesel oxidation catalyst, diesel particulate filter SER, and in some cases, ammonia slip catalyst. Well, the LM2 inline is an inline six cylinder engine used on the 1500 series and Yukon and supposedly Cadillac SUVs, but I don't know about the Cadillac. But in this case, I thought I'd do a quick talk about this LM2 engine. Uh, for those of you not familiar with it, again, it is an inline six cylinder engine. And in this case, it comes under the Duramax umbrella here in the US and Canada. So in this case, as you can see, the engine's all pretty much tight knit. A lot of unique features about it. It has a revised uh, cooling system. And this cooling system is designed again to pretty much uh, reduce the flow in certain areas and other other areas. So that's a whole nother song and dance. But uh, it, it does have a charge air cooler, which sits right underneath that cover on top of the valve cover. It is a liquid cooled charge air cooler. And it's also got a turbocharger variable vane on the other side, which we're going to look at here in a sec. And probably the biggest talk about on all the videos about the LM2 out there that I have seen have been about everybody's talking about that oil uh, pump dry belt that needs to be changed every 150,000 miles. So it is rear chain drive. So the drive is all the way in the rear, not gear drive, but chain drive in the rear. So yeah, there's already some dealer techs on their videos too that I've seen that are talking about the issues they're having with it. So I've had the opportunity to look at one, work on one, service one, but not do major repair yet because they're all under warranty. But in this case, this is a shot of the one that I had in the shop. So therefore you can see the LM2, typical engine compartment on these 1500s. So there is plenty of room to get around there. It's not so bad. It's not such as a shoehorned engine in there, just like we see the L5Ps on the Silverado and GMC Sierras. But, you know, everything else is uh, basically, as you can see on the one that I got once again, it's not so shabby. Okay, so you got your battery, fuse box, everything. But what I want to focus on is some of the issues on the, uh, not the issues, but the description of the after treatment. But just to give you a little bit more information, it is the LM2 inline six. Again, like I said, on the LTR, ST, LTZ, and high country models, it is paired with a 10 speed transmission. And obviously, GM Chevy says that it is getting a good 282 horsepower, 450 foot pounds of torque. And like this owner, they are getting the mileage. The fuel economy is pretty good at 28 miles per gallon. So not doing too shabby. Just to tell you where the numbers are at, if you compare this with a Duramax LB7 when it first rolled out, that had what? Over 300 horsepower, right? And over 500 foot-pounds of torque. So you'll notice 282, 450 pounds of torque at these early 2019 model, it is not bad numbers at all. So there are other lineups, in, gasoline lineups in the in the Chevy Silverado along with the 5.3 and also the 6.2 liter. But there's also another 2.7 engine too, which is the four-cylinder Duramax model as well. Found those on the Canyons. So, but I want to focus not so much on the engine. The LM2, again, it's an inline six on these trucks. What I want to talk about is the after treatment since that's been the subject of the last six videos I put out. But this one's different, okay? That's why we're putting it out there's different. So the exhaust after treatment on this is obviously still reducing the carbon monoxides and the hydrocarbons, but primarily the NOx and the particulate matter. That's that's in the first paragraphs. However, we do have SER, which we've talked about before in previous videos, where we're trying to reduce NOx. And we use actually the DEF fluid or the add blue to actually reduce and break up that NOx. But if we continue reading on that second paragraph, it's going to say there in the middle, to reduce packaging volume and manufacturing costs, the SER catalyst on the DPF is coated with a form or to form an SCR coated DPF or a selective catalyst reduction on filter. So that's the new term now that we're seeing, not only on these, on these vehicles, but also other manufacturers, including the Europeans. So SCR on F is a new thing. So this close couple, cl close, excuse me, this, the close couple DOC or desoxidation catalyst along with the SCR and filter are integrated 
into one assembly. So again, look what it says there. The DOC, along with the SER filter, you know, on F. So therefore, SER on F means select the catalyst reduction within the DPF itself. So once again, desoxidation catalyst. And then you got your characteristics of your SER and your diesel particulate filter all in one. So let's take a look at it here. So you can see from the European side, and there's a lot of great videos. I, you know, I'll try to create a link to these things, but there's a, you can search under add blue, but you can see from one of the videos out there that you're going to see that you got your NOx reducing catalyst, but then you're going to see the SER on F. So that means everything, they're trying to take advantage of all that thermal heat, all that heat that comes right out of the exhaust. So therefore this is right next to the turbocharger outlet. So therefore, like on this inline six LM2, you're going to see that right, right after it, you're going to see that there is the SER on F along with the DOC. So the thing that you're going to see different is, as you can see here, is the def fluid injector doser is now water cooled or coolant cooled, and that's already been a problem here on buses that we were seeing some videos on Facebook and other texts talking about on different forums. But in this case, what I'm trying to say is the injector is now liquid cooled and it creates a little bit of a concern because typical cooling systems on diesel applications or diesel engines are about 16 to 20 psi maybe that's the broad range but i know that's where they hang out but when you got or have a def fluid injector doser that actually works with 70 psi or greater if there is a crack or break within that ser injector that means we could pressurize the coolant up to 72 PSI. So that's already happened. So in the aftermarket. So be aware of that's a little bit of a concern. So we're going to wonder what's the long-term effects of this that could affect this vehicle. Can we see it pressurize the coolant? So therefore, um, when you look at like this truck that I had, you can see the turbocharger way over here. Okay. So therefore the turbocharger is facing, the exhaust is facing forward. Unlike traditional V8s or V inline sixes, we have seen the turbo facing backwards the exhaust outlet, but the exhaust is going out towards the front, as you can see here. So they did a good job of putting some uh, shielding on it, which is damn good. The cover's been removed, and here you can see the charge air cooler. And uh, as a matter of fact, let me take my laser pointer out here. So here you can see my laser pointer. At that point, you can see, again, the air coming in and therefore exiting out towards the turbo. So therefore, air goes in through here, and we can see exiting it out through here where it goes to the inlet side of the turbo. So therefore, we see those components right there. Now, again, what I want to focus on is the after treatment. So in this case, here's the turbo. There's your arm for your variable vein turbo. And in this case, exhaust will exit towards the front of the vehicle. Okay. So this picture here from GM, you can see that there's the turbo right there. Again, there's those gas, uh, excuse me, the air coming in, which has been subcooled already by the charge air cooler. And at that point, the turbo will do its job and pressurize or compress the air and therefore go into the intake. But on the exhaust, we're going to see again the exhaust coming out. And at that point, we're going to see it come out of the where. So therefore, we're seeing it coming out of the towards the front. So we're going to have a knock sensor. We're going to have temperature sensors. And then there's your first guy right there, your diesel oxidation catalyst. And then the SER on F. There's your reductant injector. Okay. Remember, it's liquid cooled. So it's coolant cooled. Then afterwards, it'll continue, which we'll see on another graph. So again, they have merged the diesel oxidation catalyst, and then you got your SER on F, which is your SER catalyst with the diesel particulate filter. So not only are you, again, breaking up the NOx internally here, but you're also trapping the soot. So therefore, that's the way it is. I feel this is a very good thing because of the fact that we're taking advantage of the heat immediately coming out of that exhaust. So this is your point of exit of exhaust, Obviously, the exhaust is exiting through exhaust manifold through here, so it's coming into the bottom and therefore spinning the impeller wheel and coming out towards the front and again towards the diesel oxidation catalyst and the diesel particulate filter or AKA SCR on F. Okay, hopefully you grasp that already. So therefore, the components are in these LM2s. It's a four-stage process. We have a diesel oxidation catalyst. Then we have our SCR on F. There's our. Then we have another SCR. And then we have another DOC. Okay, so let's take a look at it here. 
Here you can see that they actually have numbered them. There's your bungle for exhaust gas temperature sensor. Number two is your DEF injector. We saw that already towards the front. So again, we see this is the front of the vehicle going towards the back, okay? So in this case, we see exhaust pressure differential sensor pipe. And then number three, also your differential pressure sensor, because like we discussed on the after treatment part one through six, we talked about the use of a pressure differential sensor to diagnose the DPF. And we see that on the number three and number four. Then number five, we actually have the EGR flange. So that's the flange that's going to go to the EGR cooler and goes to the EGR valve. Well, the good thing about this is that would mean that those gases headed towards the EGR are going to be already filtered, again, from the soot content that might be in there. So that means we should see minimal EGR carbon accumulation like we see on many traditional EGRs. Now, we also got a NOx number six, a NOx converter assembly. So we have a NOx brick there. And then towards the end, what do we got? We got another diesel oxidation catalyst and then your flange. But I forgot number eight. Number eight is actually a throttle plate. This, excuse me, it's not a throttle plate, it's a plate. So therefore that plate's gonna actually be controlled by the computer, electrically controlled to actually create more back pressure. So by creating more back pressure, closing the veins, you're creating a lot more heat. So that helps in passive regeneration there. So that's a kind of a good thing. So we should see on most normally driven trucks, you should see minimal uh, regenerations because you're doing a lot of passive regeneration, okay? Remember, passive regeneration means that we are burning the soot without having to add fuel into that exhaust. There's no fuel injection. So now this model, unlike the Alpha IP, does not use a dedicated fuel injector or indirect injector, as they call it. It actually does post-injections, okay, where we inject fuel through the exhaust stroke and the piston pushes those exhaust gases with heavy fuel in them to, again, go ahead and uh, chemically react with that diesel oxidation catalyst. So finally, let's take a look at it and cover it thoroughly here. So we have exhaust entering, exiting from the turbo. Again, we see our diesel oxidation catalyst. Then we see the DEF fluid injector or doser that's liquid cooled. That's injecting the DEF fluid. So therefore, this is not only breaking up the NOx and working with ammonia that's injected from the DEF fluid, because remember, when DEF fluid is injected or AdBlue is injected, it converts readily into you know, ammonia. So in this case, at that point, we are trapping the soot. That is also a diesel particle filter. And we're also, again, breaking up the NOx. Two things going on in there. So you, can't, you can imagine what the price of this puppy is going to be. It's going to be pro probably very pricey. Now, at that point, we have a differential pressure sensor, and that, again, is checking the inlet and comparing the outlet pressures to know if that particular filter is getting loaded with soot. Finally, we uh, towards the end here, we see the EGR flange, number five, and in this case, we see the exhaust gases going towards the EGR cooler and the EGR valve. So, again, filtered gases. So, soot's already been removed from it. So, again, that should give you a more efficient EGR with minimal soot accumulation. And then number eight is our plate. So in this case, that plate is actually, you know, can, can actually uh, create back pressure. So it can minimize or, again, restrict exhaust flow. I could see this working like the old Chevy V8s, gasoline motors back in the day. Yes, I'm that old. You can see from the gray hair, where we used to have a thermactor. They used to be called a thermactor. And in this case, that thermactor, what it did, again, was create a back pressure to get that engine warmed up faster. So it's creating a little bit of back pressure. Then after that, after this plate, you're going to see another SER catalyst and a diesel oxidation catalyst. So further NOx reduction and further oxidation of the exhaust, and then finally towards the exhaust. So one more time to recap. Exhaust exits towards the front. We meet the diesel oxidation catalyst, and then we see the doser injecting into the SER on F, which is, again, the SER with the diesel particulate filter. The exhaust will go out and exit some of it towards the EGR and EGR cooler, then past the, the exhaust plate, then towards a NOx reducing catalyst and a diesel oxidation catalyst, and finally towards the muffler and the rear of the exhaust. So very different. It has all the similar sensors. It does have a pre and post NOx sensor, but there is an extra NOx sensor too as well. So it also has the same components we discussed on the previous video. So. But just understand that a lot of the newer diesels, both on domestic and European side that I've seen, are going towards an SER on F, and that's what you're going to see.
What do you think? Hopefully I've learned something. Quick video on the LM2. Uh, kind of give you a better insight on that with the after treatment. So give me your comments. Uh, those of you who give me comments already, thank you so much. Uh, subscribe. Give us a little bit of uh, you know love here. So therefore, with that, until next time, we appreciate you watching. Well, I'll appreciate you watching. Another video coming soon. Thank you again.